everyone to another edition of DGWA CEO Interviews. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Matt Skinner to the interview. Matt is the CEO of Wide Open Agriculture Limited, an ASX listed company doing some really exciting things in the plant-based protein space. Wide Open Agriculture has operations in Australia and Germany, and its ticket code on the ASX is WOA and in Frankfurt, 2WO. Welcome, Matt. Thanks, Matthew. Great to be here. Thanks for joining with us. So perhaps we can start just telling us a little bit about what's so exciting about lupin, and in particular your Bunting lupin protein. Yeah, absolutely. So um, when, when you look at uh, pulses and sources of plant protein globally, uh, soy has a very high protein content, about 40%. Uh, the number two pulse in terms of protein content is lupins. So lupins have a range of protein, but generally it's just under 40%, but essentially equivalent to soy in terms of its protein levels. And the beauty of lupin is it's also got 40% fiber and then some, some sugars and some carbohydrates and some fat. So nutritionally, it's a really exciting product. And we think it has huge potential to feed people in a system where plant proteins play a much bigger role at delivering nutrition and protein to the global population. The challenge with lupins has always been their bitter taste. And that's why 96% of the world's lupins are used as livestock feed. So what's really exciting about what wide open agriculture is doing is that we have technology that makes the taste essentially go away. So we have a very neutral, clean tasting plant protein that when you add into a recipe has really good performance characteristics. So it creates better products for the consumer. And that's why we're so excited. And in particular, the German acquisition, which you completed last year with ProLupin in Germany, why was that so important for the company? When we're talking to food companies, particularly larger food companies, their first question when talking to us about our protein is, how much can you supply? And so many companies out there have a great idea that they can get to lab scale or pilot scale production. Now pilot scale can be one ton a year, five tons a year, but that's not enough to meet the needs of a commercial product in an emerging or even a mature market. And so we needed a way to be able to supply hundreds of tons of product to the market. And the German acquisition allows us to do exactly that. Now, when companies talk to us and say, how much can you supply? The question is, how much do you need? because we can supply up to 500 tons right now. And with a little bit of investment, we think we can expand it up to 1,000, maybe even 2,000 tons a year in Germany. So it's transformational for the company's prospects in the plant ingredient industry. Yeah. So I imagine this is a real competitive advantage now for the company to have this, this assets and also the staff in Germany. Yeah, huge competitive advantage, not only for people to take us seriously in the sector, but also knowing that it's based in Germany, has full IFS certification, and comes with a really experienced German engineering team. You know, it's a basically it's a guarantee of quality, and that's yeah. what people are looking for from their suppliers. Yeah, and maybe you could just talk us through a little bit about the the European growth strategy. As you know, in Europe, there's so much emphasis now on protein diversification. Um, most of our proteins are soy-based, which come from areas like Brazil. And there's a big worry about the deforestation aspects of that and the aspects on climate change. So maybe you can talk a little bit about companies' European growth strategy and, and particularly fitting into the Green Deal and protein diversification areas. Yeah, I mean, th there are so many reasons why Europe is such an attractive market. Firstly, just the global, in terms of population size, it's a huge market compared to Australia. Australia has a population of sort of 25, 30 million. There's 20 times that number of people in Europe. So huge market, but also 
they're really embracing the plant protein element of their nutrition. So a lot more flexitarian diets or vegan diets or vegetarian diets that are looking for better alternatives uh, than soy and pea for their protein needs. And so we are able to offer something better than soy and pea. As you mentioned, soy has challenging environmental credentials, but also concerns about phytoestrogens um, in humans. Pea has real challenges in terms of how it behaves and performs in food ingredients. And people really struggle to get rid of the beanie pea taste that comes with it. And so with a really clean, neutral product, we offer a much bigger advantage uh, for people who want to create the next generation of plant proteins uh, for consumers to enjoy. We also have the added advantage that the Pro Lupin company that we, that we, the assets we purchased, they had products in market for 10 years. Uh, so people in Europe, they understand what a Lupin is. They understand that it tastes great in products. And so the, the market is a bit more mature in its understanding of Lupins, which really gives us an advantage. The, the, the plant protein sector, um, pe people kind of thought it was a bubble two, three years ago. And I think there's definitely been uh, some concerns around the investment in, in, the, in the sector. But I think if you look at underlying trends, not only in terms of population growth, but in terms of you know, consumer demand for products and also manufacturers looking for ways to enhance the protein content of their products, what we're seeing is a long-term growth trend um, that's really exciting for everyone in the sector. Yeah, I agree. So just to finish, what do the, do the next 12 months look like for wide open agriculture? You know, and the number one thing we're focused on at the moment is converting our pipeline to actual sales. We've talked a lot about how good the product is. We've talked a lot about its wide range of applications. And we're talking to a huge number of players globally about what it can do in their foods. Now we need to execute on that. We need to demonstrate that we can deliver big sales, big offtake contracts. And so the entire focus of the organization is achieving that to show that we've got that scale up and commercial capacity to really grow and be a big player in this sector. I mean, you're certainly in the right sector. So good luck for the next 12 months. And we look forward to having you on again and talking some more in depth about uh, your strategy and uh, some of the key achievements. Best, thanks Thank for joining you, us today, Mitch. Thank you very thanks. much. Great to be here. Thank you.